everyone and welcome to another episode of Newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in these videos we tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you simply skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. For general news today, I'll be hosting both of my videos at their regular times this week, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. PST, Pacific Standard Time. Now, there's not much in the way of shorter news items right now, and we don't have any further shipping or fulfillment news for you, so you can assume that the COGS are simply still moving in the right direction for right now. We do have some news for Hell the Last Saga, Darkest Dungeon, the board game, Monster Apocalypse, and Rise of the Necromancers, though, so let's get to it. Nothing truly extravagant this month for Hell, but we are continuing to make progress on our stated roadmap brought to you in our January update. Here's the updated development snapshot for you for February. We haven't collected enough data yet to be able to give you an exact estimate of the timeline for the Wave 2 German, Italian, and Spanish translations, but as soon as we do, we'll make a dedicated and special update focusing primarily on that. David Demaray, our environmental artist, has just delivered the final files of the documents used at the end of the saga, to the great joy of our playtesters who were playing on some ugly diagrams scribbled by our developers. As showing all of them to you would constitute some spoilers, we'll only reveal some details out of context. It's really hard to show you our progress in these things without being able to show you anything. For those of you who can make it, you should know that Mythic Games will have the pleasure of being present at the next Cannes International Game Festival from Friday, February 25th to Sunday, February 27th. We hope to see many of you at our booth, which is 0801 in Hall 1, where you will be able to discover our games, including the upcoming and highly anticipated Anastir, which will be available for preview. For the aficionados of hell out there, you'll be able to admire closely the last figures painted by Sebastian Levine, who will also be present at the booth. And the most curious among you will also be able to, to meet Vincent, the senior developer of your favorite game, on Saturday and Sunday. We'd also like to take this opportunity to welcome translators and proofreaders interested in joining our language team to stop by the booth as well. If you have any professional experience in translation and or proofreading in the field of gaming, come and talk to our localization manager, Anne Vettelard, to see what the future might hold. For Darkest Dungeon today, as we're considering the ongoing discussions and comments and to avoid any misinterpretations, uh, we'd like to provide some clarifications and reassurances about the reconfiguration of the base boxes. Now, as soon as the factory finishes printing the blank prototypes of the two boxes, which are called white samples, we will show you pictures and explain visually exactly how these boxes will be configured when you open them. This will allow you to see exactly how much space is left and what storage possibilities they will allow with or without sleeves. Production and shipping of these samples has been delayed due to the Chinese New Year, but we should be receiving them soon, and you will be informed as soon as possible. In this case, we're pretty sure that some pictures will be worth a thousand words. We realize that this reconfiguration is a significant change from your expectations, but the current extraordinary economic climate leaves us no choice but to find ways to reduce the explosion in manufacturing and shipping costs created by shipping container prices and raw material shortages. We made a tough choice to ensure that we didn't have to ask our backers to pay additional shipping costs to offset these unusual and exorbitant costs. We realize that this has caused some, some concern, but we feel that this is a better option than asking our backers to pay a portion of the extra cost. As a reminder, the box we designed is compact, and designing a box with more empty space to provide storage in all possible configurations would greatly increase the volume, and therefore the space needed in containers resulting in an additional shipping cost on top of what we've already absorbed. We're also convinced that in the end, 
the configuration of these boxes will allow more options than those that you already fear and that many of those fears will not be realized. We are hearing your voices and we sincerely appreciate your support and passion for this game and we also understand your concerns. So we're looking forward to showing you pictures of the box's reconfiguration and we will do so as soon as possible. Additionally, as some of our backers have expressed concern about the timing of the reconfiguration update, as it was so close to the closing of the date of the Pledge Manager, we've elected to reopen the Pledge Manager from Monday, February 28th to Monday, March 14th. Backers and late pledgers will be able to make the usual changes to their orders. However, if you'd like to change a pledge level, either up or down, please contact support at mythicgames.net. We want to thank you so much for your understanding, and we also look forward to being able to share with you those pictures. So stay tuned, folks. Exciting news this week, Monster Heads. All the information required from our Chinese factories have come through regarding the shade add-ons being available in the Pledge Manager. The three shade add-ons will be available to crank up your pledge as of today. So you can head over to the Pledge Manager and add some pop to your models. In other news, the recent Privateer Press dynamic update changes have arrived here in board game land and will be instigated to ensure that the Monster Apocalypse board game will fully mirror the latest update for the miniatures game, making it totally current and totally compatible. Now we're still waiting on the data to be able to make a call on folding in the alternate sculpt elites into the hardcore unit boxes and whether we can add a complete set of the stack cards as an add-on in the pledge manager, we haven't forgotten. These kinds of decisions just take time. So keep an eye on the horizon. Sky Sentinel is on patrol, rounding up some pesky Martians. So stay safe and call guard for backup as soon as you spot any monsters. Hello, Necromancers! Well, last week was supposed to be the launch of the Pledge Manager on our website, but as our web developers ran tests in preparation for that launch, they ran into some unexpected technical issues that took a bit longer than they anticipated to solve. But now, our Pledge Manager is fully operational and tested, and will be launched this Wednesday, February 23rd, so we'll see you there. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or if you just want to see what wonders he might be able to show you because you just never know what Leo's going to do. As mentioned earlier, I'll be back to normal this week for my two other videos, so be on the lookout for those on Thursday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's it for today, though. Once again, stay safe and play some games while you're at it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.